we have discussed two types of assumptions on preferences, the total order assumption and the monotonicity assumption. We will now introduce a third one, convexity. So let's dig into the last assumption imposed on preferences. Strict monotonicity and total order is assumed in this lecture. Let's begin with an indifference curve consisting of two line segments. We have two arbitrary bundles on this indifference curve, x1, x2 and y1, y2. Let's draw a straight blue line between these two bundles and let's consider any bundle on this blue line denoted by z1, z2. Bundles on the blue line are combinations of the x bundle and the y bundle. At the middle of the blue line, for example, we have a bundle consisting of 50% of the x bundle and 50% of the y bundle. The way I have drawn this picture, any bundle on the blue line is weakly preferred to any bundle on the indifference curve. Our x bundle and y bundle are on the blue line, but also on the indifference curve. All other bundles on the blue line are to the right and above the indifference curve, and they are therefore, due to strict monotonicity, strictly preferred to any bundle on the indifference curve. Now imagine picking the first bundle, x1, x2, anywhere on the steeper part of the indifference curve, and the second bundle, y1, y2, anywhere on the indifference curve where it is less steep. If you draw a straight line between these two bundles, the same thing will be true. Every bundle on this straight blue line will be weakly preferred to the bundles on the indifference curve. If this should happen, no matter how you pick the x bundle and the y bundle, and no matter which indifference curve we begin with, then we say that preferences are convex. If all my indifference curves look like the single one that I have drawn, that is, they all consist of two connected straight lines where the left one is steeper, then preferences will be convex. Convex preferences is, in a sense, quite natural. Say that the consumer is facing the following two bundles. Bundle 1 has 7 glasses of milk and 1 cookie, while bundle 2 has 1 glass of milk and 7 cookies. Most consumers would then prefer a mix of these two bundles, such as 50% of the first bundle and 50% of the second bundle, resulting in 4 glasses of milk and 4 cookies. One example we did not consider in the previous slide was the case when we picked both bundles on the same part of the indifference curve. So let's do that. Here is my indifference curve, my first bundle and my second bundle. A blue straight line between the bundles will now overlap the indifference curve. But that is okay. Our condition, all bundles on the blue line must be weakly preferred to any bundle on the indifference curve, is still true. Remember, by weakly preferred, we mean either indifferent to or strictly preferred to. Convince yourself that no matter how you pick the X and the Y bundles, a straight blue line between them can never contain a bundle which is worse than a bundle on the indifference curve, demonstrating that this indifference curve is convex. Let's look at an example where preferences are strictly monotonic but not convex. Here is an indifference curve which will violate the convexity assumption without violating the monotonicity assumption. This is easy to demonstrate. I pick two bundles, x1, x2 and y1, y2 on the indifference curve. I draw a straight blue line through these two bundles. It's then clear that we have bundles on this blue line which are strictly worse than the bundles on the indifference curve, demonstrating that preferences are not convex. The indifference curve in this case is the graph of a concave function. A consumer with concave preferences prefers unbalanced bundles. If such a consumer was indifferent between a bundle with 7 glasses of milk and 1 cookie and a bundle with 1 glass of milk and 7 cookies, she would consider a mix consisting of 4 glasses of milk and 4 cookies as worse than both of them. Let's define the concept strictly convex preferences. Here is an indifference curve consistent with strictly convex preferences. We have two arbitrary bundles, the x bundle and the y bundle on the indifference curve. We draw a straight line between these two bundles. Now, if it is the case that every bundle on this blue straight line, except for the x and the y bundles, are strictly preferred to any bundle on the indifference curve, and this is true no matter how these initial bundles are selected, 
and which indifference curve we choose, then preferences are said to be strictly convex. If preferences are strictly convex, then they will also be convex, as this only requires bundles on the blue line to be weakly preferred to bundles on the indifference curve. Here is an example of preferences that are convex but not strictly convex. If we look at this indifference curve, which we have concluded is consistent with convex preferences, we can see that it is not consistent with strictly convex preferences. If I pick my X bundle and my Y bundle like this, and I draw a straight line between them, then bundles on the blue line are not strictly preferred to bundles on the indifference curve, as they are themselves on the indifference curve. They are only weakly preferred, which is only enough for convex preferences, but not for strictly convex preferences. Any indifference curve which has a straight line segment cannot be strictly convex. Some important results that will follow if preferences are convex. Let's start with the two goods model. We have weak preferences that are totally ordered and strictly monotonic. We consider both cases, preferences may be convex or they may be strictly convex. By the first two assumptions, we know that a given indifference curve is the graph of a given function, x2 is equal to f of x1. We have the following result. From strict monotonicity, we know that f is strictly decreasing. If preferences are convex, then f will be a convex function. If preferences are strictly convex, then f will be a strictly convex function. There is no mystery here, the way we have defined convex preferences and strictly convex preferences is exactly how you define convexity and strict convexity of a function. Remember, we say that a function is smooth if its graph has no kinks. Technically, a function is smooth if you can differentiate it any number of times. If f is smooth, which does not follow from our assumptions though, then monotonicity implies that the derivative is strictly negative. Convexity implies that the second derivative is greater than or equal to zero. This means that the indifference curve must slope downwards, and the slope will increase as we increase x1, which is the same as saying that the absolute value of the slope will decrease as we increase x1. This means that the indifference curve will become flatter as we move to the right. If our weak preferences are totally ordered, strictly monotonic, and strictly convex, then we say that preferences are well behaved. And this is often an assumption that we make on preferences. Here is an example of an indifference curve consistent with well behaved preferences. My indifference curve is the graph of f defined by the equation x2 is equal to 6 divided by x1, where x1 must be strictly positive. The derivative of this function is minus 6 divided by x1 squared, which is negative for all allowed values of x1, and the function is strictly decreasing. The second derivative is 12 divided by x1 raised to 3, which is always strictly positive. As the second derivative is strictly positive, f is a strictly convex function. Of course, we have not demonstrated that the consumer possessing this indifference curve has well-behaved preferences. To do that, we must perform the same demonstration for every indifference curve. 